Okay guys, so today we're doing the second episode of Bioactive Basics and in this episode we're going to be talking about what is arguably the single most important component of a bioactive setup, the substrate layer. So before we get to talking about putting substrate layers in and what make good choices for substrates, it is important to understand why they are so important. So obviously, if you're gonna be growing plants in your vivarium, then you're gonna need substrate for the plants to grow. The substrates are also very much necessary for custodians or the cleanup crew, depending on what you wanna call them which are a massive part of bioactive systems and I will be talking about in a future episode. Substrates are also a massive part of wild environments because pretty much every environment in nature, there is some form of substrate. So in order to replicate the wild environment for your animals, you're definitely going to need one. And on that topic, it does provide environmental enrichment. So for example, it could allow your animal to burrow. On that note, there is the worry of impaction, which isn't something I'm going to go into today because I have covered it in the past. So in the top right hand of your screen now, there'll be a little thing pops up. And if you click that, you can watch that video on impaction. But that isn't something I'm going to cover in today's video. So when selecting a bioactive substrate, there are a few qualities that are imperative for it to have. So it's got to be good draining because something that you really do not want in any system, bioactive or not, is um, that the substrate's going to become stagnant with water because it's just not good because bacteria and such will grow. You want it to have different particle sizes, which obviously that's good for drainage, but also to allow proper root development for plants so that there's little air pockets for them and that. Uh, you don't want it to compact because if you put a load of substrate in your enclosure and then it all just goes like a solid mass at the bottom, that's not really going to serve much of a purpose. Um, you also, slightly contrary to the former point, you do want it to hold burrows well for certain species. So for example, in my leopard gecko's enclosure, he likes to dig a burrow. So if he was to just dig something and then it collapsed, it wouldn't really be very good. Uh, you also obviously want it to be aesthetically pleasing, which is something you're just going to have to decide on yourself. And you also do want it to be organic where possible, so that anything that ends up into your animal as the apex predator or herbivore, depending on what species it is, isn't going to end up intoxicating them. So when you're putting the substrate layer in, as you can see here, you want the drainage layer, which are these clay balls. You can see them here and here. You want the separation layer, which is the white stuff, to go above the drainage layer and then the substrate layer on top of that. Now, drainage I did talk about in the last episode of Bioactive Basics. So again, a little card will pop up in the top right and you can click that just to watch that video if you're interested. But the substrate layer, you want to make it as deep as you possibly can for your enclosure. But as a minimum, I would say maybe about five centimetres or two inches deep is required. So when it comes to buying substrates for a bioactive enclosure, there are actually a couple of options. So ProRep make the BioLife range, which I've not tested and I've not actually read many reviews on. So whether it works or not, I'm not sure. But they are a, a decent company, so it's definitely an option. Uh, in America, you have the Atlanta Biological Gardens mix or ABG mix. So if you're in America, that's definitely one to check out. And my choice is the Arcadia Earth Mix substrates. They do the standard earth mix for more humid setups, which I use for my crested gecko, and earth mix arid, which is for drier setups, and I use that with my leopard gecko. There are, however, some commercial choices that really are not good for bioactive systems, and these are generally ones that are inorganic, like you've got them from the garden centre, and they've got um, fertilisers in them or something, which you don't know if they might be toxic but also substrates made for reptiles that are single component, such as coconut fibre or eco-earth. These just will not be good for the custodians 
and these are more likely to cause impaction and plants really aren't going to grow in them very well. Another option that isn't commercial but sort of is in terms of the components is making your own mix. Now I do know a lot of people do this but personally I wouldn't recommend it because unless you can guarantee that all the ingredients going into the substrate are organic you don't really know if it's safe to use and to be honest if you're buying it commercially then you know it's being tested well if you're getting it from a big brand like Arcadia whereas if you're making it yourself you might not have as many trials so you don't know if the substrate's going to fail after a year or not. Okay guys so that pretty much wraps up a basic overview of substrates in bioactive systems. I hope that you did find this video useful or informative and if you did please leave it a like and do consider subscribing for similar content in the near future. We'll be continuing this series in a couple of weeks with episode 3 which will be based on the leaf litter layer and all the custodians that live in it. So I'll see you then, bye guys.